it was so nice to be able to talk to somebody who had different views and perspectives and ideas but we were really talking about what we agreed on yeah and because you when you get down to that deeper level of sort of the the needs that you have that you want met you want a healthy government you want this that those are things that everybody generally wants and so that's the commonality level yeah so we're talking on that how i feel and why it really uh uh why it matters to me what makes it good for me mm -hmm. that's the second part of nonviolent communication it's not just about avoiding these forms that that might create distress yeah but it's recognizing that oh these are the two levels of that are the most powerful in terms of creating connection So, Waylon, to begin with, can you describe uh, what NVC is and how it's different than the way norm people normally communicate with each other? It's just people that don't know what nonviolent communication oh, is. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, basically, <clears throat> a lot of the customary ways that we're taught, taught to um, speak to each other uh, use forms of language, words, and such that end up producing discomfort in the other person yeah so i might say uh something like you know that was really um insensitive of you to do that now that's one way for me to begin talking about my discomfort but it creates an opportunity for you to really feel uncomfortable so language i, I guess why i should talk about what violent language is it's not like yelling and screaming mm -hmm. it's kinds of phrasings and ways of thinking about each other and our behavior that trigger some kind of distress or hurt or disruption to the relationship. Yeah. So um, they, the, the violent forms usually include something like blaming the other person, mm -hmm. um, taking their inventory in terms of telling them, Mm -hmm. uh, you know what you who you think they are and what you think of their behavior yeah um, making demands of another person mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> all of these things tend to trigger discord and so Marshall recognized that many many years ago and started asking himself what would be a more uh, smooth and compassionate way for people to begin to talk to each other. What kind of language would they use? So a good deal of it has to do with becoming aware of some of the forms of speech that do cause uh, discomfort and distress in a relationship and trying to avoid them. Yeah. Um, judging, um, criticizing, demanding, that kind of stuff. And then learning alternative ways to talk about what's going on with you or with the other person. Now, in that alternative, uh, in terms of the alternative ways, um, Marshall understood, and it's now really being um, supported by new, uh, recent neurological research uh, on the way humans work, and uh, even and, and primates, but also the current thinking in terms of human evolution and how we came to be and work the way that we are today. What he figured out is now really being validated. supported and validated, which mm -hmm. I, I find very exciting. So what he understood is that all of us, um, and he didn't use these terms, I'm going to use these terms, all of us are the product of a common evolution yeah. as humanity. Mm -hmm. And that um, in the course of that evolution, we, when we began learning to live together, uh, we started to develop not just, I mean, initially, I hope it don't get too complicated here, but initially we were beings that had uh, bodily sensations that informed us about our physical well-being, mm -hmm. thirst, hunger, you know, sex In drive. Instincts. Yeah, instincts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. 
And that was kind of the beginning place. But once we started to work together socially, um, we began to d develop social needs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and over time and, and many millennia, um, there are certain basic um, needs that have developed in humanity that we all share. They, they get expressed in different ways. People have different rules and stuff, but the need to uh, be heard, the need to be uh, respected, the need to connect with other people, uh, the need for solitude. I mean, all, of, all kinds of needs um, that we all have. <clears throat> so when we have a need, let's just talk about the emotional, social kinds of needs that we have. When we have a need um, that isn't being met, the way our bodies tell us about that is through our emotions. Mm -hmm. We start to feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, and ill at ease. And if we learn to listen to our bodies and, and the, the sensations that are there, um, we discover, oh, you know, I'm feeling lonely. Oh, okay. So the need underlying that is a need for connection. And right now, I'm just really feeling all by myself. Mm -hmm. That's a very valuable thing for me to know. And so the emotion, uh, feeling lonely, tells me that about this part of my well-being. But it also provides energy and, and direction, impulse, to try to get the need met. Yes. So he's going, all of us are trying to meet the same set package of needs that, that have been the result of evolution. They're the needs that we developed uh, that were important for us to have in order for us to be successful in a group. So I wanted to, there's a couple of um, things showing up in the um, literature these days that I think are quite interesting. Uh, so this is a social scientist who's, they, he and his group studied 60 societies, uh, over 600,000 words from over 600 resources. And they found there are seven cooperative behaviors that were in all of the cultures considered morally good and these were one love of your family two help your group three return favors four be brave five defer to authority tricky mm -hmm. six be fair seven respect other people's property other people have added to that list um things like uh and the instinct to take care of people who are ill, or women and children. Yes. So these are just embedded in us, mm -hmm. and um, everything that we end up doing, all of our behavior is, is really just, what's going on is that we're feeling some need or needs, emotions are going on, and we're acting in a way to try to get those needs met. It's on the action level, how we behave, um, the way we go about it, where we can get ourselves into trouble. Yeah. Um, but if I look out, like today, here's a good example. I look out at all of the, the divisiveness and the anger and the blaming and the, you know, f f uh, creating camps and stuff. Um, and it would be, and it is easy for me to go, well, I think those people are blah, 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 and that doesn't make any sense, and blah, blah, blah. But when I remember nonviolent communication and this deep understanding that we all are b operating out of the same need structure, I realize that all that the people who feel differently than I do, believe differently, who act in ways that I don't find acceptable or wouldn't tolerate, whatever, they're all trying to take care of themselves in ways that for them make sense or it's all they know how to do but they're trying to meet needs that are no different from mine. Right. You know, they're looking for to create more security, more mm -hmm. predictability maybe in their lives. They have recipes in their mind for, mm -hmm. well, you need politicians who do this and don't mm -hmm. do that. I, I have found that I prefer to stay anchored in that awareness that all of us, all of the, all of the people um, are trying to get something really positive done. Mm -hmm. And I share that with everybody, and I may not agree with the recipes or the formulas or the rules or the practices, but I really get it. 
that, that there's a goodness that's at play. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> so understanding that, it takes away a lot of the need to judge. Mm-hmm. And I can then sit down and go, let me find out what's happening inside that person. Yes. Let me not get hooked by the surface level in language. Let me find out what they're feeling emotionally because as we talk about that, then I might start to get an idea of the needs down below that mm-hmm. emotion that the, that the person has. Mm-hmm. When I do that, people really, in general, they really like it mm-hmm. because I'm not judging them. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. Yes. And I'm wanting to discover. Mm-hmm. And I'm checking out what I, you know, things that I come up with. I'm checking that out with them. So they pick up that my intent is a constructive, positive intent. And um, I try to stay away from, um, <clears throat> it just works better. Let me, let me tell you a story of a conversation I had with a, a man who uh, is a lifelong Republican, comes from a lifelong Republican family. Um, he is the friend of, a uh, very good friend of, he's the, brother of a very good friend of ours and we were going to spend uh, my wife and I were going to spend Christmas with them one year and I was told um, <clears throat> before we got on the plane now remember don't talk to I'm going to just call him Bill just don't don't bring up politics with Bill because <laughs> it's not going to go anywhere good because there's just no point you know, yeah. okay would you promise me I want to have a really great time with this film I love them we have hun could you promise me you won't talk to Bill in that way. So I said, I promise I won't bring that up with Bill. Okay. <laughs> Bill and I really love and enjoy each other, respect each other. Okay, so <clears throat> he invites me out to coffee. He has this little tradition he does every day, goes to coffee, and he goes, do you want to come with me? So I go, yeah. So we go, and we're in this coffee shop, and we're just talking and, you know, kind of getting caught up and stuff. And at one point, the topic of the distress and discord going on in our country and the dysfunction got touched on. And I said, it is really sad that we are in such a state of distress and mess and it's all, you know, tangled up. It's a very sad situation. Um, And I said, the reason I feel that sad is because I think we're all wanting the same thing, but we don't know that. We're not keeping, not aware of that. I think we all want a government that works well for the people. Mm -hmm. We want a government that's efficient, that's intelligent. (laughs) Trustworthy. (laughs) Well, and there is that. Yes, we'd like to have a government that's trustworthy, da-da-da, takes good care of people, is honest. It's a government by the people. Yes. Uh, Not the corporations. uh, Not the corporations (laughs) or or anybody else. That's what we're all wanting. Now, you have a different idea about what it would take to get there and who should be involved. But I think we have a great deal in common. And so we began talking about what we had in common. Mm-hmm. Um, that we really, what does it mean to have a government that really works for the people? Yeah. It really takes care of the people. So we began to really lay out what each of us thought. And we found, wow, you know, we see a lot of the stuff the same. Yeah. And then that led into discussions of, um, he lives in California, he has his whole life, and I have as well. So he brought up the fact that he liked some of the things that Governor Brown did, uh, Jerry Brown, wait, I'm not, yeah, no, it was Jerry Brown. Um, and, he, and yet he's a Republican. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you know, I voted for Arnold Schwarzenegger when he ran because I thought he was the best choice at the time. And so th- that got us into kind of more of a detailed discussion of what we saw that we liked and what we supported. And we talked for about two hours and when we got done, we both felt very proud that we had really connected in a very deep way that was respectful, and we felt far more connected. And I understood his perspective, and I also I found out that he was nowhere near as black and white and reactive as I had been warned that he might be. So um, Probably because of the way of you, you approached it. Yeah, I think, yes, absolutely. Because I, 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 yeah. it just, I'm going, okay, how do I, where do I go from here? I was supposed to not talk about this, but it's come <laughs> up. 
<laughs> Let me see. What's probably the safest it's, avenue? It's a good thing you're in a coffee shop without your wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have been. My shins would have been all bruised up. I'm sure. Excuse me. Oh uh, yeah. So <clears throat> I thought. I really do believe we have all of this stuff in common in terms of the vision we have for what we'd like our country to be doing and how we'd be doing it. Yeah. And I found out that that was completely true. I didn't go into, well, you know, if you really want a government by the people and for the people, then, you know, how can you go for this one and this one? You know, that, that all the stuff that's games being played with election rules yeah, and all that uh -huh. kind of stuff. I didn't go there because it, I didn't feel that that was going to get us anywhere that was valuable. But... I think it was probably helpful for him to get clear, to have somebody make a clear statement that they were a Democrat and they really wanted a government that was really by the people and for the people and what that meant, because that's exactly what he wanted. And who knows, maybe that might have led later on for him to look at some of those restrictions with the voting rules a little bit differently because he goes, you know, is that really going to get us where we want to go? Um, so it was just a very wonderful experience and, uh, we were both very proud because we knew we talked about something very tricky. Mm -hmm. Um, and later I told him, I said, you know, I was told absolutely, please p promise me you won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we had a good laugh, but it was so nice to be able to talk to somebody who had different views and perspectives and ideas, but we were really talking about what we agreed on. Yeah, and because you, when you get down to that deeper level of sort of the the needs that you have that you want met, you want a healthy government, you want this, that, that. Those are things that everybody generally wants, and so that's the commonality level. Yeah. So we're talking on that how I feel and why it really uh, uh, why it matters to me, what makes it good for me. Mm -hmm. That's the second part of nonviolent communication. It's not just about avoiding these forms that, that might create distress. Yeah. But it's recognizing that, oh, these are the two levels of that are the most powerful in terms of creating connection. So the two levels And understanding. Being the two levels being, what are you feeling? Mm, yes. And, and what are you needing? And, and, and what, what is that feeling connected to? Yeah.